mind and your full attention. So you say you deal with esoteric information? I never heard of such. Well, you're in for a treat. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. I lean L Bay dropping jewels every day. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. Metaphysical, we deal with the spiritual. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. I lean L Bay dropping jewels every day. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. Metaphysical, we deal with the spiritual. So you claim to be a god? Damn right I'm a god. The maker, the owner, cream of the planet Earth, father of civilization, god of the universe. Wow. Tune in or lose, friend. All strategies apply mathematically. The information he drop is real powerful. So get your notepad, it's more than an hour full. Watch your jaw, the crew is watching talk. Indigenous to the land, wherever we stand. First world order, we bring it at home in the first quarter. Invisible lines don't apply, we cross borders. Silly rabbit, knowledge for God. No matter where you resign, Lodge, Temple of Mars. So don't fret or proceed with hesitation. Just tune in to Blog Talk to get the information. Peace. I'm here to fill in for, again, for, uh, Dr. Eileen on the First World Order blog talk show tonight. And I hope everything is all right with everybody in theirs and you and yours tonight. And I'm here to talk about why why should you get nationalized? What is why is being nationalized or uh, getting your nationality is so important? in each one of our lives because it's a must those who you're not nationalized to get nationalized to get a proclamation or reclamation I mean to proclaim your nationality I don't know a lot of you hear me talk or hear us talk about nationality all the time and uh, nationality this nationality that you know, so uh, I'm here to talk to you to those who are not nationalized. Really, this is a message for those who are not nationalized and for those who still uh, call themselves nationalized and still do not have a paper trail. Those who don't think the trail, don't, those who don't think they don't need nationalization papers. You know, so this is what this topic is about. Uh, the reason why I stay on nationality so much because too many of our people are still not getting it. They're still not getting it. Uh, even those who call themselves national, nationalized are not getting it. Not getting it at all. I remember a conversation I had at one of the temples I was, used to go to a while back. And uh, I was just going to the temples. I was already nationalized with the Washita, but I decided to visit one of the temples. <clears throat> and one of the brothers was talking, you know, and they were saying that, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to get rid of my last name. My last name is, uh, I forgot his last name, but I'm, I'm just use an example. <clears throat> well, my last name is Stevens, and that's been my family name for years. And I don't want to get rid of the family name. You know, and I almost started laughing, but I didn't laugh because I know that was due to his, you know, ignorance of nationality. But this was a temple more, you know, in the temples. And he really didn't know how really mm, strange that really sound, you know, for people that say they are nationalized. You know, they think that... uh uh, Robert Johnson Bay and Ellis Williams Ill and Reginald Johnson Day and so on. I think those are really a real national. You know, those are real national names, and they're not. You know, we got a lot of people say their name is uh, Larry Benjamin 
Bay, you know, and all that, you know, those are not real national names. I know I've said that from time and time and time before and other blog talk shows. <clears throat> but it still not seems to register in the vast majority of our people's minds. So I must keep hitting them. I must keep talking to them. I must keep trying, you know. I know there are those who are listening to this show tonight I already heard this before, I don't know how many times, you know, but it's, it's really, uh, <clears throat> for those who I'm talking about, it's not really for you, it's for those who, uh, the type of people who I've just got through talking about, you know, so <clears throat> I'm going to read something from Tosh Therese's book called The U.S. Nigger Industry. I know some of you have probably got this book. Uh, some of you probably heard it or seen it on <clears throat> R.B. Bay Public website. <clears throat> Excuse me. This says here, The Civil War and the U.S. Color of Law. <clears throat> A broad range of social and political abrasions accompanied by immoral, and spiritual issues and, prob and problems stem directly from the supervision of subversion and subjugation of the Moors of North America. The imposition of the brands and tags, nigger, negro, black, and colored, etc., <clears throat> coupled with misguided, low-esteem social sensitivities were designed as psychological and mental disconnects the Civil War political coup, suppression and overthrowing of the original United States Constitutional Republic was successful. It neutralized the de jure and lawful Republican form of government. One of the first political acts initiated by the slave holding Europeans was to dismantle the Republican form of government and all the southern states of the United States to effectively undermine the Constitution contract, which kept them in check. And he's right, the constitutional contract, because that is a contract between uh, the Moors of the Republican form of government and the United States corporation, corporation, I may say, to stop all these wars between us and the Europeans. Because a lot of people think that uh, the Constitution uh, is something what the so-called white people wrote. Oh, that's their Constitution. It's not their Constitution. It never was. It was something they compiled together that was already here in the first place over I don't know how many hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years that we had our own law structure here already well in place in these Americas before they came, or probably before they even existed as a people. You know, uh, this is this is what ha what has happened. They compiled that into what they call today as the Constitution of the United States of America. Uh, they, uh, but a lot, a lot of people think that a lot of this comes from England. No, it does not come from England, as I said, and many, many, many times before in other blog talk shows, it does not come from England. England does not have a written constitution. They talk of having one, but they do not have they do not have a written constitution. Uh you may want to refer to the book uh Tragedy and Hope by uh a Carol Wigley. I believe that's his name is. A very very so those of you who don't mind reading thick books, you might want to get a hold of that book. It will tell you right there. This is by a European author. Uh, he was letting out a lot of stuff about the corporation. Didn't get a chance to live too long as a result of it. Matter of fact, he's supposed to have been uh, one of Bill Clinton's uh, teachers, or uh, history teachers at one time. So, yeah. So I was, when you get this book called Tragedy and Hope, very good book. Long book. Very long book. If you don't mind, mind reading long, thick books, this is, this is a book I would refer to you to get. 
another book for every Moore's library. All right. The subverters and conspirators among the occupational European colonial powers initiated the, the Civil War circa day 12, April 1861 A.D. until day 9, April 1865 to effectively destabilize the nation and to overthrow and to displace the republic. The true function of the Civil War was to artificially create the political circumstances and atmosphere which availed the Wigamore Whigs Party, better known as the subversive members of the White Supremacy Party, to overthrow the legitimate constitutional republic whose ancient jurisprudence principles descended down from Moorish law of the great peace. So much emphasis has been historically put upon addressing the high levels of blood and carnage due to the Civil War. The little is told about the hidden motives and the attendant effect of undermining the Republican form of government. Few students of history are aware of the fact that through the peace, amity, and commerce aggressors, agreements otherwise through and by the aboriginal sovereign moors, the United States Republic and the Constitution was established. And few people, very, very, very few people uh, know about this because it's not taught across our schools. And I mean it's not taught in our schools not in grade school, not in high school, uh, probably not even in college. <clears throat> On some universities, and that's not taught because they never taught you real history, especially real history about ourselves. You know, uh, these uh, as part of the dumbing down process that they have been putting upon us for decades, you know, especially decades after the Civil War. To keep us to keep us from being reconnected, uh, keep us uh, from reconnect, uh, reconnecting ourselves to our ancestors and to our history and culture. This is why you need to get nationalized. Nationalization brings uh, freedom, real freedom. A lot of most of you think you're free. You're not free, and especially economically free. They free you from both of these slavery, uh, uh, from these uh, slave stages. Let me move along here. Upon the uh, for, <clears throat> upon the foresaid successful defeat, the subjugation of the rightful people, the overthrown Moors were force, force, forcefully and falsely branded as Negroes, niggers, blacks, colors, etc. The Moors' ancient and de jure law and their organic and principled great seal government was veiled over by the U.S. democracy and postures. You know, uh, a lot of us feel like that. Even when you say niggers, okay, uh, niggers, I, I could also mean God. You know, uh, it don't exactly mean in a negative term the way Europeans have used it against us. As most, as some of you don't already know. No, some of you already know, but some of you don't don't already know that. Uh, no, yet. So I want to put that out there. Okay. Uh, said express as simple terms. One would say that the European impostors traded places with the legitimate government. This abridgment of true fiction and of identity, theft of land, heritage, and language, brought upon brought about an important and an opportune time for the socialization, criminals to establish a fiend credibility for the colorable enforced introductions of such disassociation words, which fictitious words are crucial social vehicles used to feed the Europeans politically created nigger industry and was cleverly used to institutionalize bureaucratic slavery. Yes, uh, they have stole our birthright, meaning they have stole our right and our inheritance to this land. Our name as the true Americans. 
a lot of people uh, deals with the name Moor and Morocco, but it had other ancient names uh, 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 prior to that. Like I told you before, you had Amuru, you know, A-M-U-R-U, Amuru. That's one of the ancient names of America. You know, Amuruka, A-M-U-R-U-K-A, you know, Amurukos, you know, Al Murukos, A-L-M-U-K-O-S. They had different names, and sometimes it depends upon which tribal nation uh, they were, so they had different pronunciations of the word. Then you had uh, Amorica, you know, then you had Al Morocco, then you have Morocco, now you have today known as America. That's why I usually don't call myself a Moorish American, but that's an oxymoron. You know, more it's like, it's like saying you are more, more, or saying you are an American, American twice. Because more comes from America. And we have the Amer, M E R, which is Amer, uh, also means water. And it means water in French. And it means uh, in other languages, other ancient languages, and in the ancient Egyptian language as well. Meaning more. See, more is the ancient terms, the ancient identity of our people. They don't want to tell you that it comes from the Greeks. Well, the Greeks had no language. So how in the devil did it come from the Greeks? We taught them. We gave them their language that they speak today. Those are these great scholars and great researchers, you know, haven't, haven't done their research like they think they have. Okay, these fictitious foods are crucial social vehicles used to feed the European politically created nigger industry and were cleverly used to institutionalize bureaucratic slavery. It says here, herein lies the sorcery, natural application of using the colored legislative instrument began being the unconstitutional and seen as ratified adaptation of the 14th Amendment. I spoke about the 14th Amendment last week and other and another week before that, remember? It has not been properly ratified, but you've got some uh, more highly scholars, most of these so-called scholars and highly enlightened and and some claim that they have a nationality, the same ones that claim that the claim that you don't need to have any paperwork or a paper trail, you know, to file or to proclaim your nationality. These are the ones. They have claimed that the fourteenth amendment has been properly ratified. But no it has not. I explained to you last week why it has not. But I'm gonna go on, okay. Says so is this uh, talking about the fourteenth amendment now. This colored and never properly ratified amendment created the corporate artificial person. The major component and evidence and proof of the artificially officiality of the 14th Amendment is the fact that there are not and never had been any natural person, persons such as Negroes, niggers, blacks, etc., attached to the human family. No such human beings exist. However, there are shadow brands of European-owned corporate property, which are and as designated and marked by their Negro, nigger, black code names. This is your names as Smith, Jones, and Johnson. Because our foremothers and ancestors were not did not carry these names. I mean, you, you, a lot, most of us will never know what our original names were, of course. Of course not. But you would want to try to find or find yourself a name that's that close or that resembles what your ancestors' names were. 
so you can start back to honoring, giving honor to your ancestors and stop dishonoring your ancestors. That's why you want to have a nationality. You want to start honoring your ancestors. To call yourself black, African-American, people of color, that is a dishonor to our ancient foremothers and forefathers. And you will start honoring them by proclaiming your nationality. That's what you want to do. Go and social engineering. Cold efforts were put forth to solidify these colorable political acts during the Civil War era. Grand scale undertakings were initiated to establish the color of law laced with permanent colorable forms of inquisition, superiority laws, crusades, initiatives were often guised as martial law, juxtaposed with colorable courts and the birthright stealing. Christian black codes, there are the slave governance codes established by the church in the year 1724 A.D. These became the institutional backbone, guidelines, and directors for the U.S. sub-government agencies and their quasi-government support systems. The U.S. corporate state persons adopted various concurring and harmonious forms of these black codes for administrative governance uses of against the aboriginal Moors, whom the Europeans branded as blacks, colored, and Negroes, etc. See why you need to get nationalized? See why you need to get your nationalization papers? Because you want to have them in court. You want to have them as a certain uh, of your nationalized, uh, nationalization papers as court documents. You want to have them as evidence. You want to have them notarized. You want to have them uh, put in the county a recorder of records and deeds and vital statistics. Because in the U.S. Census Bureau, you are branded as uh, if you were born between in the 1930s. Uh, uh, like my mother, she branded as Negro. After that, and then later, later on, they were branded as colored. Later on in the 60s, they started branding us as black. Then later on in the late 80s and early 90s, they were branded as African American. All are missed numbers. All are missed numbers. You know, I uh, see a lot of brothers selling a lot of papers out on the streets dealing with so-called black liberation and uh, African-American movement, this and African-American movement, that. But when I come up on them and talk to them about nationality and birthright issues, they seem to go silent on me. Like, what in the hell is this brother talking about? Because most of them don't really know what you're talking about. Most of them think that the so-called, uh, what the Europeans have put in the movies today, that the so-called Native Americans is, uh, most of them are that you see in the movies and don't look like us. Most of the, show you, most of, most of the time they show you in the movies Look like mong uh, look like mongoloid, which they are. Came from Siberia and uh, Manchuria through the Bering Straits through Alaska, Canada. That's when they ran into us. When they ran into through Canada and the Americas, that we were already here. Then they start mixing in with us. That's why you see so many of our people always talking about, oh, I got some Cherokee in me. Oh, we got some uh, uh, Navajo in our family. Oh, we got some uh, Comanche in our family. They're actually there in our family. We are the original Cherokees. 
But you see the, the chief of the head of the Cherokee Nation now, he's a European, but she is not Cherokee. I don't honor him. I don't uh, give him the honor of calling him. I don't give him that honor of calling him the chief of the Cherokee Nation, which is originally a uh, uh, word for Cherokees, uh, Kitiwa. Some of them, you had a lot of these Europeans, these what you call uh, $5 Indians. $5 Indians, you heard me, that just uh, you know pay $5 to be uh, to recognize as indigenous. Native Americans, which they are not. That's birthright theft. The reason why uh, so many Europeans live so, uh, better than our own people is because they stole our birthrights. Our birthright has been stolen from up under us and claim that they're us and living off of our birthrights, living high on the hog off of our birthrights. They have stole our blueprint for civilization. You know, how many of you know that uh, a lot of us weren't even never never were slaves, but still they took on English names. So we must start taking back our indigenous Aborigine names. Like one of my middle names is Takamsha. My other middle name is Tunica. Those are Aborigine indigenous names of America. Takamsha meaning panther through the sky. Tunica means the people. The term Tunica in the English is means Turner. That's where Turner comes from. The word tunica. Like Washington from Washita. But but in in its originality, in its organic sense, it doesn't it doesn't say that. It's not pronounced that way. This is where we have to go back to get back to. We have to get back to who we were. We have to get back to the source. Get back to the mindset of our foremothers and forefathers. So our days may be longer on this earth land. That's why it's so much important to uh, get our nationality, correct our names what we call a name correction. We don't say name change if we say name correction. We must correct that. So that will tie us back to the land. That that is a more, a, a, a woman or man that is tied back to the land. Land connected people. That is it more. More does not mean black. It never did. You got some so called uh, scholars or whatever will try to tell you that. You got people on YouTube that are having all these debate issues, and uh, people like Dr. Reggie and Professor Larry uh, Sarnetta, which Sarnetta knows better. If you watch the YouTube with Todd showing him who he is and all these other clowns are talking that foolishness and that dumbass mess. The 
to be honest with you, I'm getting, I'm almost getting ready to think they're agents myself, because I don't believe that they're not, they're that naive. They're that stupid. So let me move along. There are rims of information available to study about the Civil War time period in the uh, Civil War period in North American history. Although most publicized scripts are rec- reconstructed with weighty occupational European pretexts. However, we will dutifully address some of the major and less revealed aspects and motives surrounding the Civil War and slavery, which are expositive expositive of the de jure republic's public government being overthrown. These issues will be addressed in a more candid and dedicated treatise and will be published in a future Al Moroccan Star newspaper issue. That's the, that's the uh, newspaper they used, used to issue in uh, New Jersey and New York on the East Coast. I don't know if they still issued that newspaper or not. So, you know, it was a very informative uh, newspaper that they issued out and informed it to the people, trying to inform the people to wake up. You know, so that's what he's talking about. The Civil War military action in its true and hidden political essence is expanded upon in the Protocols of Liberty, Moorish Heritage Series, Lesson Book Number 14. Al, the main focus of this present writing is, is directed to expose the negative sorcery and to create, to, I mean, to, cor- to correct many of the political and conceptual wrongs and misperceptions created by the art, the artful misplacement of the nigger brand tag and to expose the original and negative political purposes of its uses in North American society. These in, this intent is to initiate a reverse of the negation, unbalanced polarity. Keep in mind at all times that factually, the only legal and conditional basis for a particular body of Europeans as being a legitimate political part of the United States Constitutional Republic was and is limited to their honor and solemn solemn allegiance to the Constitution, to the Peace and Friendship Treaty of 1787 A.D. And though their solemn oath to uphold the Republican form of government as established by one of the Moore's Constitution contract with them. Outside of this, said Republican political platform, the Europeans are definitely geographical intruders, political aliens, and constitutional subversives. That's right. That's why they're living so better than uh, so much, so much, so much, so much, so much better than, than a lot of our people are. So they're living off our birthrights. The names of Americans for themselves. Now they're known as Americans. They are descendants of European immigrants. You hear a lot of them use the word pilgrim. Well, what is a pilgrim? A pilgrim is a foreigner. A lot of the Europeans use that that term without really knowing or really doing any research on what that term actually really means. I know there are some of you that have seen some of those John Wayne movies, and you see and you hear him use the word pilgrim. Mm-hmm. Okay, it says here mental. Dissimulation. Dissimulation is an abstract noun, which is derived from the verb dissimulate. Dissimulate is a word often used in psychiatry and means the ability or tendency to appear mentally normal when actually suffering from a disorder. Dissimulation is a common characteristic of the pra- of the paranoia. Paranoia is a mental disorder 
characterized by systematized delusions and the projection of personal conflicts, which are ascribed to the supposed hostility of others. The artful and deviant misplacement of the words Negro and nigger were politically and with negative sorcery applied by the opportunist the opportunistic suppressors to cause a socially active simulation of dissimulation among the targeted and enslaved populace. The natural people's land rights, their rights to property, ownership, their rights to self, authority, and their ancient and pre-existing government were supplanted by the foreign European occupiers. A few, I mean, a key feature of the disassociation has been the conspiratorially adopted posture of Europeans faking as the as the sovereign government and that of the impersonating as Americans. Because that's what they're doing. They are impersonators. They are imposters. And they put these um, uh, other people, the so-called Native Americans, which they are not, a lot of them can't tell you how these pyramids or mounds were built in the Americas. They can't tell you because they didn't build them. Our ancestors did. We did it. But at one time, we were all that were here. It says here, <clears throat> the cunning nigger. Blemish was successfully marked the masses of many unsuspecting natural people. Among the common users and ad- adapters of the brand words Negro and Nigger, etc., little is known of these words, originally scientific and organic origins. Furthermore, little or less is known of their colorable civil and political trick sub applications. Least of which is out of these words being adapted for stagnating and malefic legal use purpose and properties. The naive ones among us are customarily void of vital root knowledge as etymologically designated to these brands, actually functions in North American society. For these words in their misplaced forms are most crucially related to the alien colonial refuge, birthright death, and or to the sub- supplement the su- to supplement the psychologically induced subversion of peace among the people in one of our lands. Others among us have long known the truth about the deviant nature and false applications of Negro and nigger as imperfectly applied to Moors. Such acts of dissimulation, while sometimes predicated on fear and and or self-betrayals, do not in any honorable or real beneficial way remove the potency of their mental and social poisons. Dissimulation is a fact, nonetheless, and, and a well-established albatross part of the fakery harden or burden culture, contaminating the North Gate. We definitely have a lot of cleaning up to do. Let us now journey into the veil accounts, romance, and intrigue of a hidden side of the North American and world history and fake and overview of some of the suppressed and converted up more by Moore's Chronicles. As I say again about the word nigger, uh, that is one uh, meaning of the word, but you have another meaning of the, of the word. I say it again. It means uh, uh, God, you know, calling me a God. But most of, you know, it, through the years and in decades of history, it has also been used negatively and, uh, to us, you know, as uh, something that's detriment or something that's like a bad word that they call our people. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, find more about the word nigger, uh, you can read uh, Dr. Uh, Aileen L. Bay's book, The First World Order, 
Dr. Lean book, the, the book, the First World Order. If you don't have this book in your library, I suggest you, uh, if you can afford to or are able to do it, get it for your library. It is very important. A must need for your library, okay? Okay. A foundation for the false culture. Okay. Legendary Ledger Main. Institutional inter, institutionalized genocide and pathology or half marks of the US alien politics. Delations of true world history and suppression of true planetary history with some of the darkest art techniques used for forced dehumanization were cloaked in their deepest and some decadent forms out of the parasitic and dark side of the carnal rim. Humanity and civilization has come to suffer a long and drawn out bitter steam brought upon the people and the land of by an anti civilization culture and a vampiric, vampiric natured people. This and other negative counter actions to civilization was and is the signature mark or curse as left upon all the natural people and upon their lands due to the destructive inquisitionists, crusades, colonists from Europe. These conspired acts have manifested as the pur- purposefully induced present-day social, political, spiritual, and economic retardation affected upon the Aboriginal and Indigenous civilized societies of North America, Central America, South America, and the adjoining islands, uh, sometimes called Americana. Thus, we can calculate an artificial induced dark period among the natural people and observe that a manipulative state of civilization suppression was made against human progress, education, and prosperity. We calculate this and calculate this said uh, aggression pattern to account in terms of actual lost progress for the civilized world to a degree or a time value of of at least five hundred or more years and so lies force upon slavery, color of law, historical deception, truth, suppression, human debasement and abuse became the religiously practice foundation blocks for the makings of the U.S. nigger industry, the economic source and subjective subject of the stolen lands that Europeans colorably constructed. Uh, and control as well. This is the com- this is this is the common so means for their assets, draining energy, stealing vampirism, which feeds their embezzlement, gain economic and political powers in order to solidify the occupation of Europeans' iron hand iron handed grip on the lands and the resources of the falling moors, curse branded as Negroes, as noted earlier within these texts, the European colonial occupiers of North America devised a method of land, history, and law disassociation through this misuse of words in the language that the advent of the contemporary connotations, most specifically the art form used was and to uh, and to um, uh, connotatively layer and the original and true meaning of certain words as used scientifically in law and within common uh, society culture. Non-original additional connotative meanings attached to Negro have have caused such negative social adjustments amongst amongst and towards the states. Words as to render them self-contradictive. 
This has proven most effective for negative social engineering, a social existing standard examine, example of, of using words disassociation in the this misapplication of the words Negro and black. Observe the following. The word Negro and the word black are synonymous, meaning the same thing. Negro is Latin for black. Black is English. England, English for Negro. Let me read this again. Okay? This is why you need to get nationalized. I'm going to read this again. The word Negro and the word black are both synonymous, meaning they mean the same thing. Because you may have those that don't know what synonymous means. Okay. The word Negro and the word black are synonymous, meaning the same thing. Negro is Latin for black. Black is English for Negro. The scientific derived meaning for black, Negro, are in, are in noun and all adjective reference to both organic and social meanings. The following are examples presented to give the reader an overview of the, of the Negro use application the social and organic the words black and negro uh, the power of the black woman black enterprise black comedy black consciousness to to take pride in your blackness black history Black History Month, black people, black churches, and so on and so on and so on and so on. I'm going all night with this. Here it says here, the organic and geographical origin of Negro black. I have Negro slash black. They mean one and the same. The, inter- the institutionalized and written, dumbed down religious dogma and the political agenda inherent in the church, church's black codes directives confirms these codes as being a vitally important component part of the U.S. educational system. The antisocial misplacement of Negro and black seen as a legitimate human identity has been commercially solidified truth and knowledge as confirmed by the history of the world and as acknowledged by the families of nations resonates the, that Negroes, Blacks were were not and are not and never have been a part of the human family nor are such adjective applications to the natural peoples as being a part of the human family. That's why the Nation of Islam uh, cannot never, uh, so far they have been trying for decades upon decades upon decades, been trying to be recognized as a nation. Because they call their nation Islam. Islam is a religious creed, not an identity and not, and definitely not a nationality it's not a nationality it's a religious creed and they recognize themselves as black people they call themselves black people while there are no such people in any part of the human family as I just stated no such people exist that's why when you go uh, uh, Dr. Aline used to say in certain lectures when you go to court as black that's so which falls on the color color of law. Uh, you go on a court, the court, the court doesn't see you. You are invisible to them because you do not exist. You have no standing in law. You know you have no law behind you. That's why when Michael Brown's family. Uh, on the door, you heard of the Michael Brown incident here in the St. Louis, Missouri Territory back in 20. You heard about it. 
And when all that went down, they tried to go to the Geneva uh, Convention uh, to, or, or to the World Courts, I think is what it was. And they tried to get justice done for their son. But they weren't recognized as, you know, a part of the human family. Because they kept calling themselves black and African American. But there's no such people. That's why they got turned down. And then you say, there's no justice for black people. No, there isn't. There is no justice for people who call themselves crayons and crayolas and colors. What do what do a color or crayon or crayolas need with justice? That's that's like saying that a water plant needs water. I mean that an artificial an artificial water plant needs water. What 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 do an artificial plant need water for? Because when you say that you're a black a person uh people of color, African Americans, you fall under artificial persons. Because no such person exists. I fall under the color below. Would you feed a mannequin or a dummy? What do a mannequin need with food? It's an art it's an artificial constructed person. It's not real. Okay. The Negro and Black Appalachians are fiction are as fictionally infused with thin social and political and legal jargon, was and is only legitimate as tags or brands in regard of European owned and designated chattel property. Being the subjects of commerce and trade, such subjects are absent of the benefits of moral light or goodness and are denied the protecting powers of the polit- uh, polity of civil government, etc. Thus the tax Negro Black concurs with and legally categorized with the social, political terms of several little more twos, meaning dead in the eyes of the law. That's what it means. I'll read this again. Thusly, the tags Negro Black concurs with and legally categorizes with the social political term civil liter mortus, meaning dead in the eyes of the law. The turbid Negro status thus established as a society that such subjects are disabled and to bring any de jure action for he or she it is what they call extra legum mortus extra legum mortus is Latin and of old and modern jurisprudence terminology and phraseology which means he she or it is out of the law and is placed out of the law such socially Christian Motives are bankrupt, as it were, or civilly dead. That means you're 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 outside of the law. I heard Taj to be Bay said it many times. You, you, that means you're an outlaw. You are outlaws, and you're under occupation. That's why a lot of our people. That's why we are being treated the way we are being treated. It's not because uh, your your skin is so-called black. It's birthright theft. You do not have a nationhood. You do not have a nationality. You have no rights, uh, not only uh, uh, for any so-called white man uh, to to recognize, uh, for any man to recognize. You wonder why you go to some of these uh, hair salons, 
and all across the Union States, and, 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 and especially in our neighborhoods, and these Japanese and Chinese treat us so harshly. That's why way back when in, in Los Angeles, when this young girl was shot in the head by a Korean woman, and the Korean woman got away with it. Do you remember that? That's why these people and other people get away with so much heinous crimes that are committed against our people. That's why they get away with it. This is what a lot of our people got to understand. That's why they get away with it. Although harsh and tragic as it is, uh, treating uh, anybody, any flesh and blood being being like that, you know, but it is what it is. Until we wake up and take our rightful, rightful place among men. That's the prophet would say. Okay, the birthrights, the birthrights, conscious moors. We as conscious moors, being the true aboriginal and ancient Al Moroccans, Americans, take this time to, to, to make note of the truth about the origin of Negro and to explain the social, legal, engineering use, useless of the words Negro black. We conscious Moors are also principally morally and civilly bound to reveal to the masses of the nation. These suppressed facts, these truths are being exposed to foster social peace and to actuate historical and nomenclature correctives. The word Negro is an old Moorish Latin meaning black. This is the ancient na name for the chimpanzee. Okay, I'm going to read, I'm going to read this again. There's a lot of you don't like this. Well, I don't like it either. Okay, but I'm going to read it again. The word Negro is the old Moorish Latin meaning black. This is the ancient name for the chimpanzee. The word black or Blake, B-L-A-K is of Middle English, meaning Negro. Middle English means such foods have historically and etymologically development and social usages and adaptations during the 12th to the 15th centuries. The 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th centuries is what they refer to as the Middle Ages. Before then, in ancient times, that word was not in, not in usage. So our people wasn't calling themselves black. Am I right or wrong? And then you go further in the etymology of the word black, meaning of the word black, it means Blake, black, B-L-A-C, blege, which means B-L-E-G-E, which means pale or white. So you brothers like Dr. Reggie, Professor Larry, uh, Sardinetta, Sarah Susan Seti, when you ever you and the other and, the, and you other clowns uh, out there talking about black power, black power, black power, what you're actually saying is white power, white power, white power. That's what you're actually saying. Okay, let me move along here. The reader must always keep in mind and never forget that the words black and negro means absolutely the same thing. The only variable between the two words black and negro is that they are derived of different languages, yet having the same meaning. Therefore, the words black and negro are synonymous and interchangeable. That's right, same way with Morocco and America or Al Morocco in America. The same thing. Both words are interchangeable. 
they both mean the same thing. That's why sometimes I call myself a Moroccan. I'm saying the same, I'm saying American. Or Aboriginal Indigenous American. Aboriginal meaning the very first inhabitants of America. Indigenous meaning native to the land, natural to the land. American. The very first inhabited and have inhabited and a natural person and native to a Native American. That's what I'm saying. Aboriginal Indigenous American. Therefore, the words black and negro are synonymous and interchangeable. The deviant functions deemed for the social and political use of these words have colored their original meanings. We will continue to make the discernments between the original organic mean or origins of the negro, black, troglodyte, nigger, and that of the social political uses of the words negro, black, as perversely applied to sub to subjugated members of the human family. We begin our deductions with the organic organs of Negro. There we will address the subverting social political applications of Negro, at which instance Negro takes on the attributes of an adjective as opposed to a noun. However, grammatically corrections and the proper applications of these misplaced words can be made and implemented, bringing some social Remedy to the social slave victims of these words. These, this exposes the corrupted linguistics as used in the U.S. slave-oriented strategies for cultivating mental warfare and psychic attacks. Uh, when you uh, say more to most of our people, they never heard of the word. They say, What's, what is that? Some of them may say, is that some kind of religion? You know, they don't know. That's why I'm here on the blog talk show, the first world audio show tonight, and I keep on repeating this. I keep on saying it in a different way, but I keep on repeating nationality and birthright principles issues. That's why I keep doing this. Because most about the vast, the vast, the vast majority of our people are still not getting it. Some people may say, I heard that before. Oh, he said that already on two or three or four or five block talk shows. Yes, but there are some out there, but the but the vast majority out there are still not getting it. What about them? You got it, but what about the vast majority of our people? What about them? You just can't say, well, I got that already, man. I heard that already, but and, and to hell with the rest of my people if they don't get it. You can't you can't say that. You can't do that. I won't do it. I'll put it that way. Okay, let me see here. The biological and organic origin of Negro, black. One. Traglodyte nigger is the black chimpanzee monkey, being a highly intelligent anthropoid and of southwest Mexico, southwest Africa, South America. Chimpanzees are commonly found along the Amazon River and the Rio Negro. The chimpanzee is a southwest African aboriginal Anthropoid ape, pan traglodyte, having very large ears, dark brown or black hair, having an album or pinkish complexion. The skin is smaller, less erect, and less ferocious than the gorilla. But I tell you one damn thing, though. He said that this is the black chimp. It represents the black chimpanzee. Monday, cut all the hair off of it. And see what color they are, what complexion they had that they have then. That goes for the gorilla too. 
their chest may be black, their face may be a, a, a black, color all their hair up to see what the rest of their body look like. Same thing with a dog, a jackal. Cut all their hair off and see what they look like. Look just like them Europeans. So I don't want to hear that shit. Okay. Here we go. Number two. Trevor Black Nigger is a caveman or a cave dweller, being the modern man descendant of the Traglodyte. Now there you go, see? Now, number three. Negro Yavera Arabo or Arabo or a black chimpanzee monkey. It's a highly intelligent anthropoid age of ape of southwest Mexico, South America. Negro Yavira Yarabo is a cave man or a cave dweller. The modern man descended of the black chimpanzee monkey or tragodite. Okay, this is why um, like I say again, uh, a lot of people want to get off into their uh, UCCs and want to authenticate the birth certificates and do the UCC filing number ones. Uh, some of the, some of you on the Block Talk Show know what I'm talking about uh, before they even get nationalized. And I'm gonna tell you that's the wrong way to go. I've told you this many, 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 many times before on the First World Order Blog Talk Show. I told you this. But you have uh, sisters and brothers many, many, many times time, time since then still want to do the UCCs or non-UCCs and authentication of the birth certificates and the secretary or the second of the letters. There's nothing wrong with any of that. You know, although you have some sisters and brothers talk that man as that it is, but there's nothing wrong with that. I hear one brother talking about dealing with child support issues, and he said he don't deal with authentication of birth certificate or UCCs. He don't deal with that junk, as he referred it to. But in order to deal with your uh, birth certificate, I'm not birth certificate, but uh, 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 child support issues, uh, they're always go into your birth certificate because that is your estate. That is your trust. And all trust goes back to the birth certificate. So you have to get your birth certificate authenticated. But, 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 you must, you must have a nationhood. You must have a nationality. Because it all linked back to your nationality. This is why you you should nationalize. This is why you should have a nationality. <coughs> the nationality will tie you back to the land of your ancestors. It will tie you back. If some of you think they don't care if you call yourself a more, that's a lie. If not, why do they, uh, those of you who have heard about uh, the actor, uh, Asiatic actor named Michael J. White, why was this more, why, why was this, uh, his movie, The More, was never put out across, across the theaters, across the U.S., uh, uh, the states across the, the America, across the these American North America. Why was he ever done that? Why hasn't they done that? Why is his movie so suppressed? How come they'll never tell you that you're Moors if they don't care that you call yourself a Moor or not? If they don't care, you call yourself a Moor or not? But then, why is a lot of this history, history is suppressed? Why they still emphasize on black, African American, and people of color? Why they still, which is the commonly name used today? 
than Negro and colored of the past. How come they don't? How come they don't want you to use your true identity more? Answer me that. If, it's a, if they don't want you to know why, and this is uh, these things I just read to you, especially about the Civil War. Why isn't this being taught in the history classes, in the, in the classrooms, in the schools across the country? Why? Why has it been taught that not only we enslaved our own people, we enslaved Europeans, hundreds of thousands of Europeans as well? Not on plantations, but what we call Bonnyvilles. Most of us still get shot. You tell them that we used to enslave Europeans. A lot of them would be shot that the first... Uh, a uh, 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 slave owner was a Moor. A lot, of, a lot of our own people be shocked at that because they can't imagine or fathom that us being power over European people or what they call white people. They can't fathom that. They can't believe that that's beyond their imagination. Just because they they have been so socially engineered, mind controlled, and brainwashed that they have always Europeans have always power over Asiatic people, and this is the way our people think. And this is the mind level that a lot, uh, most of our people are on. That's why I keep coming on every Wednesday with the um, with the nationality issue. This information is not, of course, not mainstream. Of course, it's not. That's why, it's the, the, if that's so, if they don't want you to call yourself a more, then why is this inf- information? I am presenting you tonight. It's not on mainstream media. You think they're going to make a movie about the history of the Moorish Empire in Europe? I have three volumes of the history of the Moorish Empire in Europe. Three volumes. You think they're going to make a film and a movie about that? Huh? Think they're going to make a movie on the history of the Washita, de Namandia, Moor Nation Empire? But our Empress, peace be upon her, uh, Empress Verdiachi, Tunica, Gustav Il Bay, you think they're going to make a, a biography or a movie about her? You think they're going to make a movie about noble, about Prophet Noble uh, Drew Ali? You think they're going to make a movie about the Haitian revolt? How they use Spain, England, and France against each other? How they won their independence? John Jacques de Siline, you think they're going to gonna make a movie about him? To sign the overture? You think they're going to make a, a movie about him? About us kicking Europeans' ass? Come on. Make no movie about us kicking their ass. Make a movie about them kicking ours in a heartbeat. Come on. About the true... Louisiana Purchase deal, which is not the Louisiana Purchase. That's our land. That land, the, Louisiana, the, the land from the Louis, from Louisiana all the way from the Gulf of Mexico all the way to Canada, never was purchased. 
the money they sent uh, 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 for that purchase sunk in the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. So that non that land was never bought. You think they're gonna make a movie about the way the Russian language is being spoken today? Was it because of a Moor named Alexander Pushkin? You think they're gonna tell you on mainstream Hollywood movies? Or on uh, the, the uh, 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 mainstream media, that Alexander Pushkin was a Moor. You think they're gonna tell you that? If they don't want you, they don't care nothing about you calling yourself a Moor. Then why? Well, why don't they put it out there then? Huh? Okay. It says here, the substitution of nigger brands and the displacement of nationality. U.S. automation operative component. Nationality is the social quality of being a part of a nation. Let me read this again. That's why we all should get nationalized. We should all Proclaim our nationality. Okay, I'm going to read this again. Nationality is the social quality of being a part of a nation. Free national name. A free national name is the common indicator of those who are part of a nation. Pedigree is a noun which defines a line of ancestors and family bloodline lineage. Read it again. <clears throat> Pedigree is a noun which defines a line of ancestors and family bloodline lineage. Pedigree denotes descent in genealogical relationships. Nationally implies a geological the ge- geological relationship as well as a confirmed and verifiable political connection to a specifically identified nation conjoined with written or publicly known allegiance. That's why we push nationality for our people. Those among the family who may have only a vague understanding about the true nature and origins of what has been artfully tagged as race relations may be easily misled into supporting the modern man's deliberate infection of social society by way of corrupt culture, which has been deemed and labeled as race hatred. Keep in mind the fact that there is but one race on the earth or the planet. That race is the human race. The human race is deduced and expanded into extended families, which are universally known as nations and nationalities. Did everybody get that? Oh, a whole lot of people listening to this tonight. Because they really need to listen to this. Those who you will know what I'm talking about, know what I'm talking about. But those that need, that really need, the, uh, are the ones I'm really trying to reach, uh, those of the uninformed. That's what I'm talking about. There is nothing less a scientific explanation for how the unqualified so-called races were made or experimentally created. Central Mexico, Central America, 
was the ancient geographical location of the capital, the capital for the Muslim more a Muslim nation, Moabite, is the ancient name for the Moorish nation. Now I'm gonna stop right here. Now <clears throat> Moabite is one of the nation, one of the ancient names for Moor. It's one of the ancient names. You had the word Mu, which is very, very, very ancient. M U. Which I told you before, I believe, in the last first world on the Block Talk show uh, last week. I want to uh, kind of go over that a little bit again, dealing with uh, the land called Lemuria, which is Lemuria. When you read the book uh, The Children of Mu by uh, James Churchward and The Land of Mu, also by James, James Churchward, and deal with the land of Lemuria. It's sunk in the bottom of the Pacific Ocean like the Atlantis did, but left a lot of islands afloat out in the Pacific Ocean, especially uh, uh, the islands of the Hawaiian Island Group. You have the Marshall Island Group. You have the Mariana Island Group. And you have New Guinea. You have the Solomon Islands, the Gilbert Islands, the Marshall Islands. Carolina Islands, the Palau Group, all these islands, all these islands of, of that land, Mu, with Sunk, the Hawaiian Islands, which is one of the islands called Maui, was another ancient name for Moor, Maui, Hawaii. Think they're going to teach you that in history class? I think not. I'm not going to teach our children that. Teach our children nowhere across these Union States of America that. Mm -mm. But it's true history, though. It comes from Moon. Then you have Amuru, another ancient name for America. Amur is the A, the A M U, the M U R. M U R, another ancient name for Moor. Moor is the modern term for Moor. M U R. Modern uh, Moor is also the modern term for Moo. Mare, as it was, uh, where the French word got it from, the ancient, uh, ancient name in Egypt, in ancient Egypt, which was Mer also. Uh, means more because the ancient Egyptians were Moors, African Moors, Moors in America, Moors in Australia, New Zealand. We all are Moors. You hear this? You hear this crazy ass nonsense of people talking about how the Moors betrayed Africans, how the Moors enslaved Africans. All this kind of crazy mess. This ain't with a bunch of agents. They're trying to fill your head with a bunch of nonsense. How the Moors, the biggest race traders in history, how the Moors enslaved Africans, like Africans are not Moors. There is no Moors and Africans. We are all Moors. I don't want to put that out there and get that straight right now. Okay. Where were I? Was I? Okay. There is nothing, nothing less a scientific explanation for how the unqualified so-called races were made experiment, experimentally, experiment. Experimentally created Central Central Maxim, Central America was the, uh, was the ancient geographical location of the capital for the Moabite nation. Moabite is the ancient name for the word Moorish nation. I already told you about that. Eight a marked distinction between 
the Moabite nation and directly a descendant of Moorish nation is that the Moabite nation was a matriarchy and the descendant Moorish nation is a patriarchy. There is much more which can be addressed, but for the part of the history is not the subject of this writing. We will, with limitations, address the Yakubian experiment as a subject and issue in a minimal format to remove the vague inferences concerning races. A more extensive scientific and historical dissertation on the contemporary development of the races as a human family condition is dealt with and explained on a broader scale in the Moabite Moorish Chronicles related to the ancient Moabite Yakubian experiments. There are some of you that as a member of the nation of Islam uh, especially know what, I, what we mean by Yakub. He was a uh, supposed to have been a renegade more scientist uh, that created the Europeans, which are the I, which, which they are the actual Trilodite nigger, ape monkey. Like I said, you cut all the hair off of a monkey and see what color he is. See what he look like. Okay. Here we go with this um the Charles Darwin Darwinism. I'm not gonna get into that because 'cause I'm mostly dealing with uh about get uh get into that with another lecture on another first world order blog talk, but not not now. Dealing with Darwinism. Okay. Okay. For a lot of our people, uh, it seems like the, when you do bring nationality to them, it's like they want to run to the hills. I don't know what it is. Uh, I have met uh, one sister uh, from the African village here in the St. Louis, uh, Missouri Republic, and uh, she was from the uh, Ray Hagen's African Village Center. Those of you have heard heard of that or know what I'm talking about. And she was talking to me, ramping ramp, you know, and raging about the UCCs and how, how she's going to do the UCCs and and everything like that. And I asked her, have you ever heard about nationality? And she looked at me like she really didn't know what I was talking about. She really didn't know what I what in the world I was talking about. What in the world is this man talking about? Nationality. You know, I said, have you heard of nationality and birthright, you know, principles? But she really haven't. You know, it's like I was talking a uh, different or uh, foreign language to her, you know, because, uh, like I say, a lot of these so-called uh, black liberation movements don't talk on nationality, don't talk on nationality at all, talking about being black. I'm black this and I'm black that. My black African in this being a pan Africanist, As I said before, and I said it last week on the Blog Talk Show, how about being a pan Americanist? How about that? I mean, it's true that we are of African descent. You know, but a lot of our people has, before we were the only people on the planet, the only people on the planet, we were the only people here. So, uh, even millions of years ago, a lot of our people explored across the rest of the planet and inhabited other lands of the earth from the uh, via from the way of Africa to the Gulf of Mexico, Mexico, South America, all over South America, North America. 
Mansa Musa. Uh, I don't know about many thousands of ships over here. A lot of them, them made pre- permanent residence here over millions of years, a hundred thousands of years ago. Long before any so-called white man set foot on this uh, on on the show, or even existed. Before any so-called white man even existed, was even in existence for that matter. To go deeper than that, we were here. Because one 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 no other people were in existence at that time. We were the only one that were here. Those are the, those, those, so our ancestors are the ones that build the mounds. That's why these so-called Indians or Native Americans can't tell you who built the mounds. They don't know. They weren't here when they were built. No, you what? Uh, a lot of the uh, dealing with your UCCs and birth certificates, you must be nationalized first because it all brings you back to your nationality. And if you don't have a nationality in place, then that's no good. I mean, you cannot be uh, Ronald Jones in charge of the Ronald Jones estate. It doesn't work like that. I don't care. If it is, I don't give a damn if it is and, and higher or low case. Well, you can write Ronald Jones and uh, all lower case and uh, uh, other, other Ronald Jones and all high case and that'll make a difference. though the hell it won't. You still property. Mm, doesn't work that way. Uh, um, you, have to, you have to, you have to proclaim your nationality. It's the order of the day. If you think, just think about it. Look at the nation of Islam. Look at Minister Farrakhan and the nation of Islam. Home, uh, however, uh, they say that Mr. Farrakhan has a nationality card. They say that I heard that uh, Mr. Farrakhan is uh, uh, is nationalized. I don't know that for all that for sure, but uh, they say he is. And if so, why isn't he telling his people that? Don't tell me they're not ready. No, they're ready. They're more than ready. They're not ready to receive that information. Bullshit. I don't want to hear that. And uh, I hear him telling one brother, brother, he was he was a brother. He was a uh, one from one of the more uh, science temples was visiting <clears throat> Mount Maryam in Chicago, Illinois. And Mr. Farrakhan was telling him, brother, uh, <clears throat> that white man ain't afraid of, afraid of you. He's afraid of that black, he ain't, he ain't afraid of that fez you got on your head. He's afraid of that black face. That's not true. He ain't never been afraid of your so-called black face. It's what you got on that black, on the top of that black face is what he afraid of. Yes, he is afraid of that fez. Yes, he is afraid of them turbans. Because the more and more he feels with fezes and turbans on our heads, he knows that he will link ourselves back to our forefathers and forefathers. He knows that we are linking ourselves 
back to the family of nations. And he knows that the so-called white man knows that, that the more and more we do that, the more and more and more we know that we are the real original Americans and not them. Talking all that nonsense. Just think, just think of it. Think of it, Morris. Think if the nation of Islam all get nationalized, all, all these uh, nation of Islam mosques all across the Union States, even in Jamaica, even in England, all get nationalized and start calling themselves Moors. Start all them start wearing faces and turbans and see how everybody react to it. But they don't know because they never tried it. They never done it. So how how in the hell would they know? Talking about the so called white man don't care if you call yourself a more or not. Or well, how do you how do you know have everybody have everybody else tried it? So how in the hell do you know? Negro? Agent? Or whatever? This is why we getting done in the way we getting done in. You have a lot of our own people that try to stagnate this movement. As they did uh, during the days of Prophet Noble Drew Ali, because he made a statement one time, he said, "50 years from now, you never, you, you, nobody would never know I was even here." But in the year 2000, we we will become back to our own, and we are. Slowly but surely, we are coming back to our to our own. And this is going to be real soon too, sooner than a lot of you think. But this European structured, what they call European structured government, is crumbling like like a stale cake. That's why you see a lot of these businesses are closing down, like Sears, places like Target. I don't know if they have Targets in other states, but I'm just naming the same. There's certain, there's just, just a few uh, stores and businesses we have in the St. Louis, Missouri territory. Like I say, just think of the nation of Islam all nationalized and nationalized them as Moors, nationalized themselves as Aborigine or Aboriginal indigenous autochthonous American people. Wouldn't that be something? But no, they want to know everybody else want to still call themselves black, African American. You've got a lot of these so-called conscious people that I can't really talk to. They're supposed to be conscious. And you explain to them, you explain to them thoroughly, real thoroughly, why they should be nationalized. Now, what is nationality? I just read it to you a few minutes ago. It's being part of a nation. Having a nationhood. That's what you need. But anyway, uh, you have uh, certain people that is, uh, you know, they say a lot of them getting paid off, paid off agents, and bought off will sell you out for a dollar. You know, 
even their uh, their masters that pay them off don't really have no respect for them because they have no respect for traitors. But when all the empires fall, fall what you gonna do, nigga? Hmm? What you gonna do? When the empire finally falls, what are you going to do? Hmm? Where are you going to go? Huh? Because we know who you are. You know who I'm talking about. Huh? See, so being a national and uh, <clears throat> uh, getting your nationality and the importance of proclaiming your nationality gives you a different status. Let me read what status means right here, okay? Status, standing, state or condition, social position, the legal relation of individual to rest of the community, the right, duties, capacities, and incapacities which determine a person to a given class, a legal personal relationship, not temporary in its nature, nor turnable turn, 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 at the mere will of the parties, which will third persons and the state are concerned. While term implies relation, it is not a mere relation. That is a status. Determines your social and political position in society. You, you, I mean, you calling yourself black? You no, know, that's not an identity. It's, 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 you know, it's describing what you look like, but that's not your identity. That's not who you are. That's not who we are. We are not black people. We are not African Americans. We are not people of color. We are none of those. Never had been. Our ancestors never called us those those brand names. Never. Negro, colored, black, African Americans, people of color never called themselves that. Because those names weren't around. It wasn't in the usage when our ancestors was here. More was. Or uh, boo. Moor, M U R, or Mer, M E R, or Muru, Moabite. Those names were around. Maui, Maui, Hawaii. It's an ancient name for one for this particular Hawaiian island. You know, I mean, uh, uh, it's not complex for our people to understand. It's not complex. You know, it's really simple. But you know what? I'm going to keep going at them, though. Keep hitting them. We got to keep hitting them. Hit them, keep hitting them until I go to my grave. But I'm not able to do it no more. We have to make a way for our children, children's children, our children's children's grandchildren, grandchildren after that, and after them. Because if we don't, they won't have a chance in the future. They will not have a chance. That's why we got to make this right this time. I mean, this time where the prophet left off at. You know, you have to, uh, uh, you know, keep ourselves going. 
and keep going with this. Because I know I am. And I hope a lot of you will join me. How many of you how many of you with me? With me, uh, Doctor Eileen, Sister Kadira, Taj Tabik Bay, Doctor Abdullah Abdullah Tabli Osa Mosi Bay, Grand Sheik Nature Bay, King Bay. Well, they're getting ready to cut me off, so I'm gonna say to you again. I do not want to wish to insult, but to educate. But until next time, I will be the same first world order block talk uh, uh, station. I will be back. All right, to all of the families of the world and to the human family. Bawasa Matakunda, peace family. Ahawate Washita East, peace and love to you all. Peace. I'm out.